إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed the most truthful of speech the best of words are the words in the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and the best guidance is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها and the worst of affairs are those things when you've invented to this religion of ours. وَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ And everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation. وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضُلَالَةٍ And every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. وَكُلَّ ضُلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. ثُمَّ أَمَّا بَعْدٍ My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, كُنْتُمْ خَيْرُ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تأمرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله. Allah سبحانه وتعالى He says what means you, you true believers in Tawheed, you who worship Allah alone without partners and believe in His Messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and you really follow Him and His Sunnah. You are the best people ever raised up for mankind. You enjoy the معروف. You enjoy what is good from Tawheed. And worshipping only Allah to all that is good. And you forbid the munkar, shirk, kufr, polytheism, disbelief, and all that is evil. And you believe in Allah. This is a statue that we can only hope to represent that we are from the best of nations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, إِنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ يَهْدِي لِلَّتِينَ هِيَ أَقْوَمْ وَيُبَشِّرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الَّذِينَ يَعْمَنُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ أَنَّ لَهُمْ أَجْرًا كَبِيرًا Allah says what means verily this Qur'an, this book, the one which we were very arduous to study and read in this month of Ramadan that just passed. This guides to that which is most just and what is most right and gives glad tidings to the believers in the oneness of Allah and in His Messenger Muhammad wasallam, who work deeds of righteousness that they shall have a reward with Allah. So we must remind ourselves as Ramadan has exited and we left that month that month that Ibn al-Jawzi, rahimahullah, he said, if the inhabitants of the qubur, of the graves, could have one wish, they would wish for another day in the month of Ramadan. This is the value of the month that we just left, then we got into the month of Shawwal. So we must remind ourselves with the importance of all the good deeds, the importance of this Qur'an, that it's not just the book of one month out of the year, but it is the final message to humanity for every day of our lives. So we do not fall into... This ayah where Allah said, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا So we do not fall into this phrase where Allah says that the Prophet ﷺ will say, and he will say, Oh my Lord, my people have deserted this Qur'an. May Allah protect us from being the deserters of the Qur'an, but may He make, may he make us from those who are the people of the Qur'an. About Allah, Ramadan came to us as a battery charger, as a reminder, as a reminder for us to save ourselves and our souls from a torment that could come to us if we don't take heed. As a life vest, we're drowning in this dunya like a person drowning in the middle of the ocean. And Ramadan came to try and save us, the month of maghfira, of forgiveness, the month of tawbah, of repentance, the month of the Qur'an, the revelation of the Qur'an and studying the Qur'an. The month where the doors of Jannah were open, the doors of Jahannam were closed, the shayateen were chained up, yani they were weakened. At that time, the masajid were more frequented than other times of the year. Charity was given. The Qur'an was read and studied. 
and we emulated the Messenger Muhammad وسلم, better than we ever did. We lived life as we should be living it every day of our lives. This is how Ramadan was spent. Yet, we ask now that it has finished, and only a week has passed, who has undone the good they did in that month? Who has done, undone the home, the shield, the shelter that they built so strong during Ramadan? Only to lose a salvation that maybe gain, they gained during Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّتِي نَقَدَتْ غَزْلَهَا مِنْ بَعْدِ قُوَّةٍ أَنْكَاثَةً Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says what means, and don't be like her, who undoes the thread which she has spun after it has become strong. Who is foolish enough to spend a month sewing a blanket that would protect you and give you warmth, only to when it's sewn, just go and pull a string and undo the whole blanket. Who is foolish enough to build a fortress strong against any inclement, only to then after it's built, bring a bulldozer and knock it down. Who is foolish enough to build a home, to build something out of wood, and make it something that is beneficial and protective, only then to go and light it on fire? Who is foolish enough to plant a garden of trees and crops, and let them grow, and the fruits grow, and the vegetables come out of the ground, and then before you take one, you go and you till the whole garden down? This is what the similitude of what we do when Ramadan leaves and we go back to our old ways. So soon after the days of Ramadan, after the days of fasting, the days of reading the Qur'an, of giving in charity, of looking for charity, standing in Qiyam till the feet ache, that the shayateen get released, the devils get released, and the avowed enemy, Al-Adu Al-Mubin, Shaytan himself, he releases himself and his, his, his soldiers, and they get us back into evil and sin and transgression. Shaykh Saleh Al-Fawzan, Habibullah, he said, Ayyuha Al-Muslimun, O oh, those who are Muslim, all oh, the brothers and the sisters, in min alamat al-tabur shahr Ramadan, an takuna hal al-Muslim ba'dah ahsan min halhu qabl Ramadan. He said, from the, situa- the situation of the acceptance of your fasting is that your situation after Ramadan is better than it was before Ramadan. La anna al-hasana tadu ila al-hasana, because when you do good, other doors to doing good become easier, and it comes at you easier and faster. <clears throat> and the good deeds that you do, not just the hasanat, the good deeds you do, the good things you can find yourself doing that you can implement in your life, once you start doing them, it becomes easy to do other ones. He said, uh, Habibullah, may Allah preserve the Shaykh. And Ramadan is a month where the Muslim he gets used to doing good deeds and doing good things, and he cultivates himself upon obedience. So, after Ramadan, then he is firm upon that ta'a, upon that obedience. In the majal al amal al salih maftu maftuhun ana al layl wa al nahar fi kull al sana fa in narat al qiyam fa qiyam al layl mashru' fi kull al sana. تَقُومُ مَا يَسَّرَ اللَّهُ لَكَ وَتَحَافِذْ عَلَى ذَلِكَ وَتَدَاوُمْ عَلَيْهِ Shaykh Salih al-Ghazan, he continued, حَبِيدُهُ Allah saying, <clears throat> from the good deeds is Qiyam al-Layl, that you would get up for tahajjud, and you would get up and stand to Allah, worshipping Him in the depths of the night. And it's definitely something that you can do, standing up for Allah in prayer during the night and during the day, throughout the year, not just in Ramadan. So if the person wanted to do Qiyam, then they can do Qiyam al-Layl, and it's mashru', it's permissible and allowed and encouraged for you to do it inside of Ramadan and outside of Ramadan throughout the year with what Allah makes easy for you, and that you preserve this action if you were upon it. In Arab al-Siyam, fa-Siyam mashru'un wa mustahabun fi sa'ir al-Sana. If you want to fast, then fasting is likened and encouraged for you to do, not just in Ramadan, but throughout the year. The six days of Shawwal, مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانٍ وَاتْبَعَهُ سِتَّ مِنْ شَوَالٍ فَكَأَنَّمَا صَامَ الدَّهْرِ The Prophet ﷺ, he said in the authentic hadith, whoever fasts Ramadan, then follows it up with six days in Shawwal, in the month we're in, it will be written for him or her like they fasted the whole year. Just to do six more days in this month, they don't have to be in a row. They didn't have to be from the second day, the day after Eid. For example, they didn't have to be like this. You can do Mondays and Thursdays, because this is all from the Sunnah from the Prophet You can do the three middle days of the month at the same time. 
If you fast those six days. Now for those who didn't have days to make up in Ramadan, they must make those days up first before they go to these six days. Wallahu a'lam. In aratta talawat al-Qur'an, fal-Qur'an mayassum fi kulli waqt. Allah said, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلْذِكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرِ فَدَوَامَ عَلَى تَلَاوَةِ الْقُرْآنَ فَإِنَّهُ حَبَّ اللَّهِ الْمَتِينَ بِيَدِكِ وَاعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْدِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا If you want to read the Qur'an, then reading the Qur'an was written for you to do throughout the whole year. And it's been made easy for you. As Allah said, and we indeed have made the Qur'an easy to understand and to remember. Then is there any of that? of you who will remember, who will go and study this book, so that the angels can encircle you and flap their wings out of joy, seeing what you're doing, praising your Lord, and studying the deen and the message that He sent to you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, that this is the rope, uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, وَاعْتَصُمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرْقُوا Hold fast, tightly, cling to the book of Allah, and do not become divided. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Know that although the month of Ramadan has passed, you should not let a month of struggle and sacrifice turn into just days of you being hungry and thirsty with no reward and no growth towards Allah. If you continue the struggle of Ramadan after Ramadan, then this is a sign of your acceptance. This is a sign of the acceptance of your fasting by Allah. And the opposite is true. The one who goes back to their old ways, and it's not upon that same struggle, then maybe this is a sign that Allah did not accept your fasting. The purpose of which was to achieve taqwa, not to lose weight, not to get healthy, not to give up a bad habit, per se. The purpose was to achieve taqwa, as Allah said, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Fasting was prescribed upon you and those before you, so that you may achieve taqwa. And Ubayy radiallahu anhu, when he was asked by Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, what is taqwa? He said, did you ever walk down a, a, a narrow path with thorny bushes on the side? And Umar said, of course. Ubayy asked him, so how did you walk down that path? He said, very carefully, so the thorns wouldn't grab my thobe and tear them. He said, this is taqwa. You live a life where you are concerned in every waking moment with what you say and what you do to protect your deen. To protect your deen so that you don't fall into sin in any way displeasing to Allah. My brothers and sisters in Islam, looking at your phone during Jum'ah is not permissible. Holding the tasbih or the dhikr beads and the likes of this during Ramadan is not permissible. Afwan, during Jum'ah is not permissible. When the Imam is giving the khutbah, it is upon you to listen. You enter, you pray two rak'as, and you sit down and you're listening the rest of the time. Barakallahu feekum. Or you lose your Jum'ah. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من نسى الحسى فقد لغى ومن لغى فلا جمعة له Whoever even plays with the carpet in front of them or plays with some stones or does anything of these things even giving salam to your brother shaking his hand or to the sisters her hand or giving them salams or waving this is لغو this is idle speech ومن لغى ومن لغى فلا جمعة له and whoever does this there is no جمعة for he, her or him بارك الله فيكم so my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, some just hours into the day of Eid, some a week even later, that all is past, all the worship and self-control goes down the tubes. We forget Allah. We forget the sunnah of His Prophet ﷺ. We forget our deen. We forget our masajid. We forget our purpose in life, why we're created. We forget that reason why we were created. It wasn't to please others. It wasn't to just have a jannah down on this earth. We were created for the purpose of worshipping Allah. As Allah said, I did not create jinn or mankind. We did not create jinn or mankind except to worship me. Meaning, Allah saying, worship Him alone. At the beginning of Ramadan, we always remind ourselves to turn our lives around. Increase in ibadah, increase in good deeds, leave off sin, correctly get on our tawheed, leaving off any type of shirk, even if our families and our people that we know, our friends turn against us. We're not engaging in that shirk no more because it was, let's say, culturally adopted. We would do our prayers, we would pay our zakat, we would fix our family ties, silat al-rahim, we would uphold our modesty and our manners, we would live by the Qur'an and the sunnah. Is this too much to ask? Is Allah asking too much of us to live this life outside of Ramadan and not just in Ramadan? Is what Allah asks of us too much? Is it going to kill us or end our life if we just live our life like we do in the month of Ramadan, but we live it throughout the years? Where we want the we want the akhirah, we want Jannah more than we want this dunya. 
It won't kill our life. It won't end our life. It won't make us have a horrible life. But rather we will have a good life in this life. And inshallah we would also have one in the next life. In the barzakh, in the grave. Yom al-Qiyamah, on the day where people are fleeing. Yom yafirru al-maru' min akhi wa ummihi wa abi wa sahibihi wa bani. Fleeing from all of the ones they love. Willing to throw them in a fire to save themselves on that day. But you can be in a state of peace and security till it's said to you, Udkhuluha bi salam, thalika yom al-khulud. Till it can be said to you, enter Jannah. Go, you have earned it. Enter Jannah, this will be your place for eternity for you to live. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, don't you know that the Lord of Ramadan is the Lord of Jumada and the Lord of Dhul-Qa'da and Dhul-Hijjah and the Lord of Muharram and the Lord of Safar and Rabi' al-Awwal, Rabi' al-Thani, of Rajab, of all the months. The Lord of Ramadan is the Lord of all these months. So how can we just show up in that month? Has Allah Azza wa Jal khassas al-Siyam fi Ramadan faqat? Or khassas al-Zakah or al-Sadaqah fi Ramadan faqat? Or has Allah Azza wa Jal khassas al-Tawbah fi Ramadan faqat? The answers to these questions are very simple. Did Allah specify fasting only for Ramadan? Making Tawbah, repenting only in Ramadan? Giving charity only in Ramadan? Praying in the Masjid only in Ramadan? Making Qiyam or Tahajjud only in Ramadan? Allah did not specify this. Rather, He commanded it of us at all times. Every day, every month is a time for Tawbah. Sincerely at all times. Allah said, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Allah says what means, and repent all of you together. Repent jami'an, O believers, so that Allah may grant you success. Every day is a time for charity. Allah said, لَن تَنَارُ الْبِرْ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ You will not achieve al-bir, righteousness and goodness. In this ayah it means the reward of Jannah. You will not achieve the reward of Jannah until you give from that which you love the most. As far as I know in this ayah, Allah did not say fi Ramadan. And Allah did not specify at holy times or at you know, certain times over others. But it was a command for all times. From the signs of Allah's acceptance of our siyam is that taqwa was achieved and you follow up the good of Ramadan with good for the next 11 months if we are blessed to see another Ramadan. Allah says, In the Ladina qalu rabbun Allah thumma istaqamu fala khawfa alayhim wala hum yahzanun. Allah says what means, Verily those who say our Lord is Allah only, and He's the only one we worship, thumma istaqim, then they have istaqama upon this. They stand firm upon it and straight on their tawheed and abstaining from haram and doing righteous deeds <clears throat> and doing all good deeds, on them shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. This istiqamah is important. Allah said it here. It's not enough that you say, or you do once, or you say you believe, or you do some actions for a time, and then you're not steadfast upon that. There must be the istiqamah. Allah said, وَإِنِّي لَغَفَّارُ لِمَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمْلَ صَالِحًا ثُمَّ اهْتَدَى Allah says what means, and verily I am indeed forgiving to the one who repents from their sins and believes in my oneness and does righteous good deeds, then remains constant in doing them till his or her death. Thumma htada. Being conscious, being upon that firmly. It doesn't mean you ain't gonna sin, but for the most part you're repenting and believing and doing righteous deeds and looking for ways to make tawbah and earn Allah's forgiveness and rahmah. Standing out firm was not just a call or a command for Ramadan, but for all days of your life, from Jum'ah to Jum'ah, Ramadan to Ramadan, min salah ila salah, from one prayer to the next prayer, these are all times where we should call ourselves, remind ourselves to do good and stay away from evil. As the month began, Ya Baghir, Ya Baghir Khair, Aqbil, wa Ya Baghir Shar, Aqsir. Oh, in the beginning of Ramadan, the call, O oh, one seeking to do good, come on, do good, it's available for you. And O oh, one seeking to do evil, resist, restrain from doing that evil, stay away from it. And this should be a call we answer throughout the year, not just when Ramadan begins and ends. So ask yourselves, my brother, my, yourselves, my brothers and sisters in Islam, do you think one Ramadan, this past Ramadan, was enough for you to say, was enough to save you and get you to Jannah? Did one Ramadan, does one Ramadan make the Ummah? Are you fine being a Ramadan Muslim or a Jum'ah Muslim? Are you okay with the Qur'an being read only and acknowledged only in the month of Ramadan? Or should it be a thing that is the light of your heart and your chest, the guidance for all of your actions and your statements? One of the beauties of Islam is that it's an everyday way of life. 
So how could we show up in Ramadan, yet the minute Ramadan leaves, we leave. And we abandon the Qur'an. We abandon the sunnah of His Messenger Wasallam. We abandon the khayrat. We abandon coming to the masajid. When we prove to Allah for a whole month, we could do it. Yani if anyone was foolish, it was us who came and showed Allah we're capable. And we could do it when we want to. As if Allah would not reward us outside of Ramadan. Allah says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ وَالْتَنْظُرْ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدٍ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ Allah says what means, O oh, you who believe, fear Allah and keep your duty to Allah. And let every person look to what he or she has put forth for tomorrow. What will you bring to the table when Allah comes to question you? What will you bring to the scales in terms of weights, good deeds and bad deeds, when the mizan is brought forth and your deeds are weighed? Look forth to what you will bring to tomorrow. And fear Allah, verily Allah is all aware of what you do. Allah must. He deserves to be remembered and acknowledged and be the most important aspect of our lives at all times. Anything other than that, you have da'af. You have a weakness and you have not tasted halawat al-iman, the sweetness of faith. The, the sahaba radiallahu anhum, they had the effect of Ramadan for five months, six months. Then the next five months, they were preparing as if they were going to see the next Ramadan. This is how they lived. They didn't fast the whole month, then just returned to evil. So the believer, the Muslims, they fall into two groups. Pick which one you want to be from. The one who Ramadan came, and yes, they fasted, they prayed, they came to the masjid. They did righteous deeds, they gave, they studied the Qur'an. But as soon as Ramadan ends, they return to the sin. As if they don't care that Allah exists. And if you think who would do such a thing, it's very visible. You don't even need to squint to see it. It's as clear as the sun on this day, with no clouds in the sky. That's how clear it is. The people going back to not praying, the people going back to not regarding the Qur'an, the people going back to not caring about sadaqah, the people going back to not caring about fasting, abandoning as if Allah doesn't exist. And then there's that second group. And hint, this is the group we shall be from. The ones who in Ramadan, they strove. They gave money, and they gave more than they thought they may have given at the beginning. They fasted every day, trying to achieve that taqwa. They read the Qur'an and they studied that Qur'an. And since Ramadan has ended, they have tried to pick it up and tried to listen to it and tried to learn it and memorize it. Ramadan ended and they feel like the person they loved the most of a human left them and that they would never see them again. They were saddened, afraid. They tasted halawat al-iman, loving Allah and His Messenger ﷺ more than anyone and anything else. Afraid that Ramadan would end in fear that they could recoil to sin. Which group are you from? The one who when Ramadan ended, you pretty much ended your life living your whole year, your days, as if it was Ramadan every day, worshipping Allah the way He deserves, fearing Him the way He deserves? Or do you still have a sadness in your heart, even with the weather boiling, that I want to fast so I stay close to my Lord. I want to pray to Hajjud so I can get close to my Lord. I want to make the Qur'an something I do as part of my daily routines, not just Keep it for the next Ramadan if I were to see it. Reflect upon this. And may Allah preserve us and give us istifama. In alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'khiruhu 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 wa my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, which group do you want to fall into? Or which group do you fall into? Evaluate your last week since Ramadan has ended and we celebrated Eid a week ago. You can still preserve Ramadan by being steadfast, by correcting your heart so that you will be safe on the day of resurrection. And we mentioned this during the Eid khutbah, subhanAllah. From the statements of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, where he said, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونٌ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَ اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٌ The day where wealth and children will not avail you, except for the one who comes to Allah with a good, pure, clean heart. One free of uh, kufr and shirk. One free of nifaq. One free of disbelief, polytheism. Free of hypocrisy. Free of evil. On that day of resurrection, you could own the whole earth. You could come having the most money, being the billionaire, the billionaire of the billionaires. And you're nothing in the sight of Allah unless you have Tawheed. Unless your Aqeedah was the Aqeedah of the Salaf al-Salih, the righteous predecessors of this Ummah. 
you're nothing and your deeds don't mean nothing if we don't come to Allah with this. In Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim from the hadith of Al-Nu'man and Al-Nashir radiallahu anhu where he said that the Messenger of Allah he said at the end of one of those hadith وَإِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ مُغْضَى إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ أَلَا وَهِيَ الْقَلْبِ where the Prophet ﷺ, he said, truly, in your body there's a piece of flesh, a morsel of flesh. If it is sound, if it is good, if it's wholesome, then the rest of you is sound, good, and wholesome. But if it is corrupt, then the rest of you will be corrupt. He said, indeed, that piece of flesh is the heart. Aisha radiallahu anha, she said that the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, said, أَكْلَفُوا مِنَ الْعَمْلِ مَا تَطِيقُونَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَمَلُّوا حَتَّى تَمَلُّوا وَإِنَّ أَحَبَّ الْعَمْلِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَدْوَمُهُ وَإِنْ قَلْبُ رواه أبو داود وصحه الألباني رحمه الله. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said, choose such actions that you're capable of performing. Don't overgive yourself these expectations. You're gonna fail at and then give up the whole trial, anything you could try. Choose actions you're capable of performing. For Allah doesn't grow weary until you grow weary. The acts most pleasing to Allah are those the ones you do continuously, even if they're little. Never belittle a good deed. Always go and race to do good deeds. Never think it's too small. If it's a dollar, it's a dollar. If it's a date, it's a date. If it's a minute of your time, it's better than none, nothing. Always give back to Allah. Give to the community, serving Allah, and you will find that Allah helps you. Tawheed is the key to the acceptance of our good deeds being accepted, and the key to earning Allah's mercy. It is Allah's rahmah that we need to enter Jannah, not our good deeds. And we can never get enough good deeds. Allah, he said, مَنْ عَمْرَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٍ فَلَنُحْيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا وَلَنَجْزِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْرَهُمْ بِأَحْسَنِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Allah says what means whoever works righteousness, male or female, while he or she is a true believer in Tawheed, verily, to him we will give a good life in this world with respect to contentment. They will be content with what Allah decrees for them. The halal provisions will be enough for them, even though to the masses it will be like, that's not enough for me to live. And we shall pay them certainly in reward in proportion to the best of what they used to do. Yani with paradise, with Jannah in the hereafter. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we're not supposed to be into these uh, Mother's Day and Father's Day and this and that. Okay? But of those who participated in the past, why? Because every day should be Mother's Day. Every day should be Father's Day. It's not a cliche. You want to be a good Muslim, pleasing to Allah, enter from al of Allah, Jannah, the middle and the best door, the highest door of Jannah, you're good to your parents. But you know if you're a parent or you see the look on your parents' face when, for example, it's that day, that one day, that Mother's Day or that Father's Day or their birthday, none of these should be celebrated by us. Okay? But it's that one day, let's say you particularly witness others. You can see the mother or the father who gets love from their child throughout the year and how different it is when their son or their daughter recognize them on just that one day. You can see that. You know when someone acknowledges you and makes you feel nice one day, but then the rest of the year, does this person even know that I'm alive? This is what we do to Allah. And Allah does not need us, we're in need of Him. He is the rich one. He is the capable one. We are the poor ones. We are the destitute ones. We are the ones in need of Allah. So show up after Ramadan. Be true to yourselves and call yourselves to account. Who has given charity since Ramadan has ended? Who has fasted since Ramadan has ended? Who has picked up the Mus'haf and read one page since the month has ended? Who has gotten up for Qiyam al for Tahajjud since Ramadan has ended? You're, you're cutting yourself short if you're not questioning yourselves with these things. Because of the timing, Sheikh Salih al fawzan he said some things that we'll just mention in English because the, the, yani the weight of it is, is there. He said... Hafidhullah, even if the month of Ramadan comes to an end, the rights of Allah over you do not come to an end. He says, and worship your Lord, حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ الْيَقِينَ Worship your Lord until certainty comes to you. That certainty is death. So you're supposed to worship Allah until death comes to you, and you can't do it on this earth. Allah is the Lord of the month of Ramadan, the month of Shawwal, and the Lord of all the months. So fear Allah all the months. أَحْفَظُ دِينُكُمْ he said, guard your religion, guard your deen, guard your deen, guard your deen throughout your life because it was your main asset with Allah and it is your salvation from the hellfire, so guard your deen. Hold on to it for all months and all times 
Verily, the month of Ramadan should be followed by giving thanks to Allah, asking for forgiveness, being happy with the favors Allah has enabled you to fast and pray in it. So we rejoice due to the blessing, and not because the passing of the month of Ramadan. Some people are happy that Eid comes because Ramadan is over, and they can get back to indulgence. And they can get back to lahu uh, and lahu into idle talk and, and play and amusement. Rather, we rejoice that we follow through Ramadan with the worship of Allah. That's why we rejoice. And Allah says, say in the bounty of Allah and in His mercy, in that, in that let them rejoice, it is better than what they accumulate. So beware from indulging in a lot of entertainment and play. Beware from heedlessness and giving up obedience to Allah. Because shaitan, he's eager. Your good deeds are a dry plain of grass. And he has a match. Forget the match. He has kerosene, charcoal, and every lighter that's known to man. And he's wanting you to burn every good deed you did. Just so you can go back to your ways. And everything you did for a month could burn up. And he wants to erase all you have done from good actions. So when Ramadan ends, Shaitan lures and entices some of the people. So they become free and unrestrained. As if they've been released from prison. So they become free to indulge in that entertainment and play, heedless, wasting prayers, wasting their good actions. Do not waste away those good deeds that you worked hard for, lest you be like the one who after she sowed something till it was strong and something good and powerful and protective, you just go and you undo it all. So fear Allah, O slaves of Allah, guard what you have worked for from the good deeds and repent for your shortcomings and mistakes because Allah, He accepts the tawbah of those who repent. And Shaykh Salih al-Fawzan, he also said, O oh, you who during Ramadan, this is the last day, O oh, you who during Ramadan knew that you have a Lord, then how have you forgotten Him after Ramadan? O oh, you who during Ramadan knew that Allah has obligated, obligated for you, you men, yes you, the ones I'm looking at, and I remind myself first, because Shaytan comes to me, Saying, you worked hard today, man. Just stay at home for the salah. He said, Habibullah, O you who during Ramadan knew that Allah has obligated for you your five daily prayers for the men of this ummah. Yes, that goes for you boys who hit puberty. And for you sisters listening, if your husband's lazy, or if he's at work, and can't, or you he ain't around, you got a car, you got a means to get your child, your boys to the masjid, you bring him to the masjid, or you're going to be held accountable possibly. O oh, you who during Ramadan knew that Allah made obligatory for the men of this ummah to pray their five daily prayers in the masajid. How do you know that or pretend to not know that? How do you not know that or pretend not to know that after Ramadan? How do you pretend to say, oh yeah, it's not obligatory no more? Oh yeah, I knew if it was this month, I didn't know it was for the rest of the year. When the hadith are clear and we'll give that khutbah again as a reminder. O oh, you who during Ramadan knew that Allah has forbidden you from sins. How have you forgotten that after Ramadan? Oh, you who during Ramadan knew that in front of you is Jannah and Jahannam, a reward and a punishment. How have you forgotten that after Ramadan? Oh, you who used to fill the masajid during Ramadan and read the book of Allah in them, how have you abandoned them in the Quran after Ramadan? We seek refuge with Allah from this blindness and having sight and from misguidance after guidance. May Allah make us of those who worship Allah حَتَّى يَأْتِينَ الْيَقِينَ Until the yaqeen, the certainty is there. May Allah make us of those who have istiqama, who are upon the hadi, upon the guidance of Allah, following the Qur'an, following the sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam. at all means, well, ready to sacrifice all that you have, that we're upon that istiqama through all the months of the year, not just in Ramadan. And may Allah make us to be of those who live in ta'a, in the way of ta'a, of obedience, not in the way of ma'asi or disobedience. Allah makhfil al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat, al-Mu'minin wa al-Mu'minat, al-Ahya'i min humwa al-Amwat, inna ka anta sami'a kulub al-Majib al-Da'wat. Ya maqallib al-Qulub, thabit kulubna ala deenik. Ya maqallib al-Qulub, thabit kulubna ala deenik. Ya maqallib al-Qulub, thabit kulubna ala deenik. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasakun. Wa salamun ala al-Mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.